chosen. Uh, to talk about some of the existing conditions on the site, Hazard Road to the north was recently reconstructed in 2012 as an asphalt pavement. Marsh Road to the east. Uh, one note about Marsh Road is there a, there's a bridge that spans over the railroad tracks. This bridge is scheduled to be replaced in 2016, according to Ingle County. So the pavement scope will end way before the bridge. The parking lot itself, because of the extensive changes we are making to the overall site, uh, a new pavement will be designed for the entire parking lot. And as mentioned earlier, the bank to the north was recently repaved, but there are uh, some uh, distresses shown in the pavement that need to be repaired uh, to continue. Uh, to go into further depth, uh, the parking lot showed the, uh, fatigue cracking and frost heaving on site. Uh, there was an overlay placed on the parking lot at some time, but the stresses have reflected through that overlay. Hazard Road, even though it was reconstructed recently, it shows signs of light running and transverse cracks that span the center three lanes. And Marsh Road uh, shows block cracking and potholes that have been patched, but those patches are starting to fail. Uh, this just shows some of the extent of the stresses in a more uh, my design considerations that I did for this project uh, included a concrete reconstruction, HMA reconstruction, an HMA overlay, and a milling fill, and, and um, just basic maintenance according to MDOT. I'll briefly cover each one of these and give my final recommendation. Right and a new HMA reconstruction was done using the 93 design guide. Uh, the minimum thicknesses here are the minimum thicknesses to reach the structural number for the existing uh, subgrade. Uh, the design uh, thicknesses are specified by Ingham County, and the design thicknesses uh, when calculating the new structural number for the uh, pavement structure is well above the new structural number. Uh, in the rigid pavement reconstruction, it was using the Nitro Design Guide, and again, the design thicknesses are uh, specified by Wayne County are higher than the minimum thicknesses needed for the site itself, and these are based on a six-inch aggregate base uh, for Wayne County standards. Uh, and uh, a HMA overlay was designed for each one of these sites. Uh, one note about the overlays is with the Marsh Road uh, three and a half overlay, the curb and gutter system will have to be replaced to uh, account for the increased height of the pavement structure itself. Uh, for a mill fill, it was done on uh, MDOT standards and they uh, specify it can remove one and a half to four inches in a single pass. And basic maintenance would include crack sealing, patching, or cold milling and resurfacing. Uh, this is just a uh, typical maintenance plan for a 20 year of design life pavement. It includes crack sealing, patching, and mill fills. Uh, uh, my recommendations for this site, uh, for Hazlitt Road, uh, because it was recently reconstructed, I would continue the maintenance plan shown in the slide earlier. Uh, but first, just repair the, uh, the distresses that it shows now, so crack sealing, do better against uh, further damage. On uh, Marsh Road, I suggest a two inch uh, mill and fill uh, to remove all the surface distresses repair the uh, distresses before the overlay is done to prevent uh, against further cracks. In the parking lot, uh, all the pavement will be removed. The subgrade will be recompacted or proof rolled to um, meet the desired uh, subgrade modules. And a five inch uh, HMA will be placed on top of it. Uh, in all the loading bays and garbage depots, a seven inch non-reinforced concrete will be placed to prevent against uh, induced loading done by trucks. Uh, for the proposed construction to the inner of a pathway, a four inch aggregate base will be placed down below a four inch HMA. Uh, 13A mix was used to, uh, because this is mainly used for lower truck traffic and the only uh, loading done on the pavement will be pedestrians or the occasional maintenance truck. Uh, all sidewalks on site will be a four inch non-reinforced concrete, uh, leading up to six inches when placed over driveways. 
and so some sustainability practices incorporated in the design include reclaimed asphalt. Uh, MDOT already uses RAP in all their mixed designs. Uh, and since we are removing pavement on Marsh Road and the parking lot, this can be reintroduced either into the project or in future uh, projects done by Ink County or MDOT. Uh, crumb rubber can be added into the, um, the HMA mix itself to reduce rutting and also noise. This would be beneficial for the parking lot and make a more desirable location to live in. And as an alternative to a hot mix asphalt, a warm mix asphalt can be used this is uh, just an asphalt that is paved and mixed at a lower temperature and it can reduce the overall uh, construction cost for the contractor. Uh, now Laura will conclude us with the construction phasing and full cost of the project. Okay, so to start, the overall site is currently zoned for the C2, which is um, for commercial use. So this is going to need to be zoned um, as a mixed use site, which accommodates for the industrial brewery, the commercial retail structures, and then the residential apartment complex. And so then after that, we um, needed several permits based on the Meridian Charter Township on uh, mixed use plan development. And so we followed the environmental permits checklist based on the changes we made to the water and wastewater systems with those additions and the existing system. Um, and in addition to the stormwater management system, those additions that we made to the existing system. In addition, we had permits for excavation and grading in regards to the geotech that you saw. For the apartment building, we had building permits, driveway, sidewalk, and lane clearing permits for those. And then as you saw throughout the transportation and pavements, we followed the regulations from Ingham County Road Commission and MDOT. In addition, we need to have a brewery liquor license in order to have beer produced on our site. So we're going to be operating as a microbrewery, and that just follows a Class C license. This is our proposed construction schedule um, from starting with project bidding and permitting all the way through the end. We have an estimated 23 months for this project. And then I'd like to note that we um, are in, hoping to end around May of 2017 to be in line with the beginning of summer um, and then for the following fall because our main demographic for the apartment complex will be college students or young professionals and so that would fall in line with them having to move. These are our cost estimates. Um, so we have a total of $8.2 million for this entire site. Um, I'd just like to note that the structures and transportation and pavements all exclude um, labor and construction costs while the first three do include all materials, excavations, labor, and construction. So this projection um, of the cost will be increased based on the labor and construction needed for the structures, transportation, and pavement. In conclusion, we believe that um, we have met the needs of both Meridian Township and Capstone Collegiate investors based on um, the marketability of our site. If you haven't noticed already, we um, really care about the sustainability of the site, uh, the green space, walkability, and community. Um, and we believe that the public perception of this will be positive in regards to the community members of Meridian Township and the owner of Capstone Collegiate. So we want to thank you very much for your time, and we'd love to have you all introduce yourselves and share any questions you have with us at this time. <coughs>
So I think we should be pretty good. Okay. Keeping uh, it high and dry. Okay. Uh, my suggestion would be to do the 100 year storm and add a foot to it uh, mm -hmm. for additional safety. Uh, the system as a whole, uh, where are we discharging to? Where, where's the water eventually going to go? Oh, into the Pine Lake Creek. After it will, 29 hours in the uh, detention basin, it'll drain out into the Pine Lake Creek through an outflow. Okay. Um, any problems with the Pine Lake Creek that you're aware of as far as? No, I don't think so. It's a warm water creek because its source is from a, a lake, so we shouldn't have too many, um, you know. I know it's bad to dump into a cold water creek because that will affect the trout populations and a lot of cold water species, but since it's a warm water creek, it should be fine. Okay. And I, I have a question about the cost estimate, uh, if you could yeah. look a couple of uh, uh, spaces back. Uh, the comment was the structures and pavements. Uh, uh, Let's see, I, I was just wondering what, okay, so when you say it didn't have labor or construction, I wondered what it did include. The material. So it does yeah. include, it includes materials, essentially, mm -hmm. the structures and for the payments. Any particular reason why labor and construction, you know, I, I'd really be curious as a client to know how, what uh, if my checkbook is going to take right now, so if, uh, if you had an estimate of that number, it would have something on the fly, uh, that's kind of the thing I would ask, but uh, I won't right now. <laughs> uh, that's it for now. Unless we have extra time to fill. Um, my name is Michael Phelan, I'm the Consumers Energy and I'm a New York Technical Engineer, so it's my area specialty. Um, do you want to say as close as you were? You can. You said. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, and I'm not even sure. Are we playing the water role? What role are we playing today? You're, 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 you're doing the whole show. We're, we're the whole search. Well, I'm going to start with specialist role. But uh, uh, why excavate 20 feet everywhere if you only have blue clay in some spots? Well, 20 feet was the depth to get most of the blue clay out, and then additional excavations for localized areas were needed. Um, so 20 feet was just a good to get most of the blue clay out, and then there's a couple areas that would need to go even deeper. Okay. Um, well, it, I mean, it's always good to have kind of a top end number, but <laughs> earlier in the phase, especially working with developers, you can scare them away if you get too high. Mm -hmm. So you pile too much conservatism on them, you can kill the job by uh, being too conservative. So you got to kind of right. you know, practice when you can um, set up. My experience, I kind of estimated. Like 22, 23,000 for a total pro or 22, 23 million for a total project uh, cost, and uh, with Geotech being 1.3 million, it's around 8 percent. So it's, it's a big not, number. That yeah. is a big number. What do you see? The 1.3 billion yeah. uh, Geotech number. Um, well, 21,555 cubic yards. How many trucks coming in on here? I don't know the number right off the top of my head. I'm going to do one. I have to refer you to my, uh, my technical report for the exact number of trucks. It's a lot of trucks. Yeah. Um, so if you, can, if you consider that uh, um, adjacent roads, and you know, you already, you're going to be, be doing that rework anyways, it sounds like. So you kind of right. consider that. Yep. Okay. Um, that's, that's about it. I, I wanted to ask one overall question. It's just, um, I heard some nice green environmental and that stuff out of my expertise. But I didn't hear, I mean, where you said you were going to have some local plots or gardens and where are they and how do you get stuff there? And well, that would curious. be, um, we were just thinking of having it in like next, probably next to the apartment structure at the lower end. Of, we're not entirely sure yet. It's an idea of okay. composting it and using okay. it. But that would probably root, you'd have to be maintained by the local, like by the residents and stuff, so they would pretty much decide where to put it after the apartment structure is built and stuff. But okay. it was and, an idea. So. And then all the, the um, treatment process, and just, I had a hard time visualizing what it looked like and how much space it might take. Oh, it's going to be inside of the group. Okay. So it all, yeah. so it all be inside of the group. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Um, George McKenzie, I'm a consumer there as well. Uh, here from Bay Fence, but my background is at home to the home engineering. So it's 
start with Dave's question. Um, on Marsh Road, did you say there was writing on Marsh Road? Um, not a very light running on Marsh Road. More running on Hazard Road, but it would be a little severe than reading. Okay, so a mill and Phil, you not concerned with the mill and Phil that, that you'd have to fix a running problem out on Marsh and just do the mill and Phil. I, I'm sorry, let me try it back. So if you, if you do a mill and Phil, you, you don't have a concern that you have to fix a running problem as well and the mill and Phil's okay then on Marsh? Yeah, there's just uh, potholes and black cracking on okay. the Marshall. Okay. Um, the site layout, um, let me just put this one here. So I come in and um, I go into the apartment complex in, in the basement. Uh, um, I don't find parking space there. I have to go out and drive all the way around the site to get to the parking lot here or all the way around this other loop to get to the other parking is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was not ideal. Um, we were hoping to have a connection put in um, a connection put in between here and here so um, or like here so people coming out could go directly into the east lot and not have to go around but we ended up not having time to change the site plan. So something you would consider to be Yeah, it was, uh, we were considering being able to put a connection in here. So if, if you circle around, there's nothing in there. You just head right into the permanent parking lot right there. Okay. Is there any reason why we need three driveways going out on hand? What is that? Just would, would Dean County have a concern with that as close as other space? Um, as far as I know, no. Currently, it's it's working fine with the three driveways. Um, the far right one is a little close to the intersection, but it's there's no issues with it right now. And uh, According to my secret analysis, there shouldn't be any of the future site. So. I also just wanted to touch on the uh, underground parking structure. Um, the majority of those parking spaces will be for like assigned parking for unit residents. Um, so that's kind of geared towards the actual residents of the apartment complex. So there will kind of be an, like an idea of assigned parking. So the goal is not to have people going down there in hope of a parking space. Kind of they know that it's reserved for them. Okay. Well, in, in the same light, though, if you're, you know, never mind, I guess you're going to stop Um, I, I didn't understand exactly, you talked about flow rates in the water coming in the basement, um, and a quarter horse power pump to pump water up that looked like several hundred feet of pipe. Are, are you actually trying to push water up the pipe, or are you pump it up and let gravity take it down? Yeah, we were going to pump it up to the uh, pipe at the, um, the first pipe. I don't know if you can that. But, but is, is a, are you just going straight up and let gravity drain down to the pond, or are you trying to push it all the way up the pipe? For going straight up and letting it go down okay. would be a better solution. So okay. we are working that way. Can you show us where the pumps are? I, I'm, I, I'm trying to picture the overall. The, the pumps are taking water from from where to where. Well, to where you told us, but from where. I don't think we have the like, exact location placed in the basement yet, but it should just be, you know, it, it's determinable. Well, anyway. what's the source of the water that you're pumping? I guess that's what, where is that water coming from? It should be here. Can I get the uh, hooker so I can, or I can uh, move over here. It should be, um, I was just going based off, um, we should have uh, rain barrels on here, but for most, of it. it should be just the driveway area will drain into the basement and then get pumped out to the detention basin. Also, there's a required um, sprinklers in the basement system. So just in the event of the uh, sprinkler set off or anything like that, it's accounted for. Oh, one last quick question, sorry. Um, on, the floor, on, on the floor slab in your decking, um, I think you said it was two inch thick concrete with a metal pan. Mm -hmm. um, any concern about if that's stiff enough for uh, the use? In other words, if people are walking, am I going to feel someone walking in the apartment next to me? Um, there'll be uh, covering also on top of it just to, for aesthetic reasons, but I, it wasn't really considered just sort of noise. Um, but there's also going to be like insulation and um, uh, metal. I mean, uh, like, Okay, um, Andrew Hermans, 
instructional engineer. Uh, nice job, guys. Uh, good presentation. Uh, a couple quick geotech structure questions. Um, we, so we touched on the excavation already. Um, were these foundations ever considered to avoid all of this excavation? They were not uh, considered in this uh, scope. Um, I would assume those would be more expensive. I'm not, I don't really have much experience with uh, deep things like that. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. It's just that if we have a significant amount of excavation or a, 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 an unknown amount of excavation, you know, sometimes it pushes those to be the more economical or more surefire option. So that's something that maybe should have been considered if truly have, we have to excavate that amount, that much of, uh, of soil. And then also that retaining wall that you had, um, what's the interact? That's the retaining wall around the parking. Correct. Okay, and what's the interaction of that between the and the building? Just keep soil from uh, any attachment. I mean, it's just a cantilever retaining wall that's it's not supported at the top by the floor. That was actually outside of my scope, the attachment, but um, it's outside of the scope. Okay, so for this project, it was just a preliminary design. So. Right, okay, that's fine. It's just typically one would like to support it at the top of the building because that way it's not a family we're retaining wall anymore. What type of connection is normally it's in, integrated, either integrated into the floor slab mm -hmm. or attached in some manner. Um, and that way you can avoid having to you know design a family we're retaining wall which you know that would have uh, much more much more involved. Uh, okay. In terms of form work and construction costs? And then amount of concrete. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so thank you. And a couple of structures questions. Um, was the def was liable to deflection considered for the uh, design? Of the yeah, um, for the serviceability, um, the, the liable was mainly used for the deflection calculation. Okay, and then what did you hold that to? Um, the limit was, uh, I think it was the length over 240. Uh, 360. 360, okay, yeah. Okay, and um, how about horizontal deflection of the building due to wind loads from your trusses? Um, Any determination? Yeah, the that? wind load was kind of approximated in the scope of the building, mm -hmm. so no real uh, horizontal deflection was calculated. Okay. And then how about the uh, what's the what's the exterior facade of the building? Um, that was not really designed for, but it was going to be determined to be a masonry exterior. Okay, so. Like brick? Yeah. All right. So was that that I mean, so that was not taken into consideration? No. When doing the building design. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That wasn't taken into consideration. Okay. That's, that's fine. Thanks. Yes. Go ahead. Oh. I'm Dave Conklin with Respect Thompson and Reviewer. Uh, my area is the water wastewater side of things. Um, first off, I guess I'd like to tell you that uh, the overall cadence that you guys had was good. You know, kind of rhythm from one to the other. I thought Cotton Reeves was pretty good. Piano did a good job of uh, telling the objectives and the scope of the, of the project, and that's always good up front. I might have liked to have seen a little bit more of your regulatory, you know, things that govern it, you know, up front, but you got that, you nailed that in the back side of it, so that's good. Um, uh, a few things on the water and wastewater side of things, um, and in the storm side of things, is your basis of design. I, didn't, I saw. I think I saw layouts of water sewers, but I didn't see sizes. Did, 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 did oh, size so basin design. Well, I'm talking about like of the water, water oh, sewers. Yeah. Yeah, they were sized. Did, did they have them on? They don't have them on there. Right. It was more important for our scope. It was more important the location of them and how we were going to ask them. The just the size. The size I just used a Manning graph, calculated the flow that was going to come out, and sized it based on that. Okay. Was the location was more prominent. But yeah, yeah it was sized. Okay, just just curious in that all interesting in the cost basis, I guess. Um, someone mentioned the area for the treatment, which uh, you got some high end kind of unit processes in there that are kind of expensive. 1.6 million for everything, which I'm assuming is all the water and sewer with that. Yes. How much of that was the wa uh, water and wastewater treatment um, out of the 1.6 million? The majority of it. If you flip, I have a slide for the cost estimate. It's very it was like 800000 for just the treatment units. Just the equipment? Just the equipment. Because I think we established that there was no 
labor? There was labor for, okay. for the wastewater and water treatment. Yeah, so it was, um, so it's almost 800,000 for the wastewater and um, 650,000 for, for the water. Did we, did you say how much water you're actually using? No, I have process? that on another slide. Okay. So you go to, no, before that too. Yeah, um, we're gonna approximately need um, 86,600 gallons per day. But then for the brewery, that requires 62,000. Okay. So the majority is gonna go to the brewery. Did I miss that? Was that, that was in there? No, it wasn't. Oh. It. I just included it at the end. But that's how it was sized. That's how okay. all the units were sized. It was based on the So per barrel, what's your per barrel use? I think you told me that. It's, it's, yeah, it's five to one. It's a five to one ratio of water to beer. Okay. And that's an average usage. I mean, some people go up to 10 barrels of water for beer, but we hope to be efficient enough to get it to five barrels, okay. five to one ratio. All right, uh, residual side of it, the wastewater side of it. I didn't see quantities there. Uh, you had some great ideas about soil amendments for the, for the residuals. I have those uh, numbers calculated, but they're all in my technical report. Okay. But the amount of sludge was calculated, and the amount of waste was calculated. So, no, I was, uh, I liked your, I liked your schematics and put some good thought into it. Uh, the area of it's interesting to me. There's a lot of stuff going on for treating brewery wastewater. You get know, some good clean water and you gotta do some things with residuals. So. Yeah. Anyway. I'm Teresa Klein, I work for Michigan Department of Transportation. Um, I think you all nailed the over the big picture, but I had some concerns about smaller things. Um, summer. Um, you were talking about UV radiation and clean water. Yes. Have you looked into what's going on with Flint Water Treatment Plant? They're yeah. using UV. And they're having all kinds of problems. Well, it's, um, um, we're the dissociation of chloramine in particular. It's not for disinfection purposes, right. so it's a little bit different. The dosage is totally different, and the setup is a little bit different. And it only requires like four lights. So, like, yeah, it's a really low number. But I, I hadn't heard about any issues. Okay. Um, so, I can't with Eric where the detention plan flowed to. And have uh, you looked into. Your uh, detention pond bottom elevation compared to your um, structure top of pavement parking mm -hmm. elevation. What's the differentiation there? Is, there? is there a chance of water filling up the detention pond and flowing to the parking under the apartment? I don't think so. I know it's um, a little bit higher than the bottom, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. It wouldn't be topography because it'd be under the ground. But I know my bottom. I think the bottom of the parking structure is like eight fifty one for elevation, and the bottom of the detention basin is like uh, eight forty seven. So the bottom of your detention is work out. I just got kind of curious about if something happened, the water could potentially flow to your parking area. 